Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Puzzle. In today's episode, we're gonna talk again about this puzzle here, the Titan. The first puzzle I was not able to solve in a live solve. In the meanwhile, I can tell you already, I did it. I opened this thing up and it took me more than 10 hours to do so. So the difficulty remains, of course, at five out of a maximum of five. And there have been a lot of feedback of you in the comments of this previous video on what approaches I should use. For example, I think the most fa famous one was using a magnet to open it up, but there have been a statement in the instructions, no external tools. So I was sure this won't work. I tried anyway, of course. And um, I can tell you, of course, this is brass. Also the interior parts, all the interior parts are not magnetic. So using the magnet don't work, but how to do it? I also received a lot of comments of you on asking me how I personally approach this kind of particular puzzle type because there is barely no information available from first point of view, but that's of course not correct. I decided based on these requests that I today will show you or explain you my complete way on how I came up with the solution. It will not take 10 hours of course, so don't worry, but I will explain you my personal problem solving approach on how to approach this particular puzzle type. So today's episode will not be only about showing you the solution and explaining you the mechanism of this insane puzzle. It's also about the problem solving process on how I personally approach puzzles I know nothing more about as how it looks from the outside. But before we start, I would like to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring today's episode. And since today's episode is about problem solving, they are the perfect sponsor for today because Brilliant.org is a problem solving website and a mobile app that teaches you in more than 50 interactive courses how to approach and solve problems, for example, in math, in science, and in computer science. And in addition, there are also daily challenges that you can work on to improve your personal problem solving skills. One of my personal favorites, for example, is the new interactive scientific thinking course, which is targeting on getting a better understanding of the world around you by solving puzzles with science. Definitely one of my favorite courses. So unlike listening and copying in a boring school lesson, Brilliant is using this interactive approach to train you to improve your personal problem solving skills. To support Mr. Puzzle and learn more about Brilliant, use the link in the video description, go to brilliant.org slash mrpuzzle and sign up for free. And also the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for supporting my channel. And now let's go on with the Titan Puzzle and how to solve it after the spoiler break. Did you notice how beautiful this puzzle looked like in the spoiler break, by the way? Now, after 10 hours of uh, sweating, swearing and um, handling this puzzle, it looks pretty much dull. Maybe I can polish this up later. Basically, if you spend a lot of time on a puzzle like this one, you also do a lot of fiddling and so on. You are not the whole time concentrated. But if you concentrate it, or if I'm concentrated, I usually um, follow five single steps and they are all used to collect data in general. The first one is general info. The first thing is, for example, the designer. In this case, Felix Ure is completely unknown to me. I never heard from him. I never heard about a puzzle from him, so it won't help us. The second point is the material. The puzzle is made out of brass and this is limiting the possibilities a lot how to process and manufacture this puzzle. It usually also means that the geometry is a rather simple geometry. As you can see on the outer shape, there was very likely a spinning machine used to manufacture it. So you can, can consider that on the inside, for the inside mechanism, also a spinning machine was used, which is usually able to carve out some notches and so on. But that's it pretty much. Of course, there can be also be used a five axis CNC machine. But for this price level where this puzzle is, the machine time which would probably kill the price. So we consider this one was made out of spinning, at least the main shape. According to the description, there is no force required, no tapping required and no external tools, which is also excluding a magnet or anything similar. 
These are the general informations we can so far gather. The second point is about haptic perception. First one is the weight. It's nearly completely solid because it's very heavy. Means it points again in the direction of being a simple geometry. It's sometimes completely free to rotate. In other positions, it gets stuck and then something very interesting happens. If it gets stuck, so you can turn it in the other direction about two revolutions and then it gets stuck again. But it's not exactly two revolutions. So in the beginning, if you get stuck here, we turn it one revolution and another one. And shortly before we finish the second um, revolution, like over here, it gets stuck again. And this is one feature I couldn't explain for a long time. So also we can pull the two halves apart like this, but they get stuck. And in combination with the ball bearing that we assume here being inside, because we can feel and hear it, there is a standard way how this shape usually looks like. There is a notch here on the outer half and also on the inner core piece and they can spin but there is also ball bearing spinning around in this notch but as soon as you try to separate it it's gonna be blocked. And now let's come to the third point which is confirming the theory here. The third point is auditive perception. You try to listen what's going on inside of this puzzle and try to build or try to enhance your model according to what you can hear okay you can hear when it's blocked what you can also hear is the ball is sometimes rolling around like in a circular track which is confirming our theory here but in addition there happens some other things sometimes it's hitting something you can hear and it's not able to roll around so there must be something that's blocking it and also if you listen you are sometimes not sure are there one or maybe even two ball bearings inside. The blocking and rolling, partially rolling, made me conclude that there must it must look like this. I was thinking about there is on the inner part some kind of a rib or something. And this rib, if you rotate it, starts to drag the ball and then drop it again. And this sounds like this. A rib also seems to be too complicated to manufacture since this is mainly done on a spinning machine, at least I thought. So I thought it might be a screw or something that's screwed inside here and the head of the screw will drag the ball partially around and drop it again. What I could not explain with this theory was why it's sometimes stucking. So there must be something in addition. To confirm our theory even more, we have also the fourth step which is visual perception. Visual perception is about looking for details here that can confirm your theory. In this case, it's just a sphere that can rotate, so you can barely see anything, but you can see something if you pull the two halves apart. You can look inside the gap between the two halves and you see that there is a cylinder. And if you rotate one, this piece here, for example, the cylinder remains steady, but if you wrote this one, it starts to rotate. So it means this part here of the puzzle is connected to the cylinder which goes over here, which again is confirming our theory of the initial idea how this might work. And taking all of these informations we just gathered, we come to point number five, which is the most important but also most difficult one. And this one is logical thinking. We can group this logical thinking actually in three categories. So the first step is to analyze. This is what we did with the previous four points. The second one, is to imagine what's happening inside based on the feedback and informations you gathered. And the third one, and this is a very important one, is to verify your understanding what's happening inside by handling the puzzle and see if it behaves exactly in the way you expect it to behave. So I was stumped here by this locking feature and I thought if there are two balls inside, it might work like this. If there is a groove, or a notch in the outer part and uh, one of the balls will drop inside this groove. It might be clamped by this screw here and it might be, they might be compressed, they cannot parch each other so you get a hard stop like so. The problem is that you cannot understand on this puzzle where the blocking appears, in what condition, if this notch is on the top, on the bottom, left, right, you can just not hear it. You only hear it's blocking, but you cannot feel and hear where it happens. So again, 
we have the screw, we have a ball between the screw and something else and I thought there might be a pin coming from the top. This pin can come up and down and block the ball or just in case it's somewhere here, let it pass. With the screw head, which is just passing the pin so they can go side by side and the ball is somewhere in between and I had the feeling that I was very close to the solution because all the moves I did with the puzzle, it behaves exactly like my theory. The only thing I didn't know so far is where to get the ball out of the track to separate them. And this is the way how you open the Titan up. And be aware there's only a 50% chance that this will work if you do everything 100% correct because it's due to the geometry inside. I will explain you later in detail. Here you go. Titan is open. But what did I just do? That's the big question. To explain it to you in very detail how this works, I prepared this piece here on my 3D printer, which is basically the same as the lighter half, but this one is open, so we can have a look on the side. And you can see this pin here. So I added a screw here. This is exactly the same. And there are also two holes in this piece down here which are the key to open it up just that you know that they are there because i think from here you will be not able to see them very well so i put the two bolts inside and now titan is locked again okay so we start rotating and we can hear this strange noise coming from the inside and sometimes for some reason it blocks and this happens if one ball gets inside of one hole like so and the other ball cannot pass it anymore so I rotate and the other ball will be, will be blocked here on top of the ball that dropped inside of the hole and now we get the strange effects of the nearly two revolutions because if I twist back this ball will follow the pin then the pin will release it down here it will go another turn and then it will be blocked again here on the other ball. So we have these close to two revolutions that are so confusing in the beginning. To open it up and solve it, and I left this uncommented previously because it makes no sense to explain it when it's closed, no one would understand. I first find a reference point and this is done the following way. I just rotate it randomly until one of the balls drops inside of a hole. And if this happens, cluck, the puzzle gets stuck. This is my first reference point. Then the next step is I twist the lighter half back. So it will go back one revolution. It will, the ball will drop in the meanwhile. It will be down here most of the times. And then it will hit the lower ball like so. And I can hear this if I'm handling the puzzle, okay? Then I wrap this half and stop it here. And now I will find my second reference point and even the even more important one. I rotate the other half back until this ball, which is currently here, will drop down again. And it will hit this pin and based on the noise, I will be able to find the position of the minimum angle this can have. And now it dropped down, you've seen it. So I twisted this half slightly back again that the ball can drop again in the hole. I moved it over here and back in the hole, like so. And there's another hole over here. And this is what's very difficult and what I did in the end. I just put it here and move it here until this ball will also drop in the hole. And if this happens, I will be able to open up the puzzle. What's very, very devilish is that these two holes are not completely opposite. 
they are slightly angled so they are like this one is like this the other hole is like this means if we orientate the puzzle in the wrong way and this was the 50 percent chance i'm talking about if we orientate it another way it's unsolvable because the holes will point down here you cannot get the ball in both, both holes with the method i just explained you need to have them in the correct orientation you need to do all the correct steps and then you will be able to get the two balls here inside of the hole and open up the titan I hope this was understandable for you. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this episode. Also the problem solving explanation in the beginning. I'm really, really interested in getting your feedback. What do you think about this episode? What do you think about this puzzle? Was the solution as difficult as you expect? Was it much easier, much less complex? Let me know in the comments. Discuss about this puzzle, of course. Let Felix your, know your feedback. And until next time, keep on puzzling.